A match cut is a powerful transition technique which allows you to seamlessly transition between two different scenes if applied correctly. So in this video, we will learn how to create smooth, engaging transitions between two animated scenes using match cuts. So this is the lesson 8 and the final lesson of the explainer animation course and in case you have missed the previous lessons then you can check it out from the link provided in the description and you can get all the files, assets and illustrations that we are using throughout this course again from our website that is linked in the description and also in the pinned comment. So before moving forward do hit the like button and comment down below because this video requires a lot of time and effort and your likes and comments really motivates me to make more free courses and tutorials like this. So without any further delay, let's dive right into Adobe After Effects. Okay, we are in After Effects and here we have four different frames that we have animated till now in this course. So first let's start with transition from frame 1 to frame 2. Now we will just going to add a simple cut and in the process I will show you how match cut works. So let's turn off the visibility of frame 3 and frame 4 for now. So on the first frame we have a hand that is striking the egg on the table and next scene we have two hands that is breaking the shells of the egg. Now we are just going to add a cut exactly where we have the same movement. So here the hand is coming inside the scene then there's one strike and then it is going out. So like around this position, I'm going to move this frame and bring it over here. And let's cut the uh, cut this composition layer from this frame onwards. So for that, we can just use the shortcut key Alt plus the open square bracket. And now let's check out. You can see we have done nothing, just added a simple cut. And due to the same movement or same action, uh, it is still feeling like it is the part of the same scene. And the reason the transition is looking more seamless because of the common object. Here the hand is more or less the similar, then we have the egg, the shape is more or less the similar. And I have added the cut exactly where the hand is uh, in that particular position. Again, the movement is also in the similar direction. So from viewer's perspective, you will not be able to notice the frame where I have added that cut. And it would feel like it is part of the same, uh, same scene because of the common object plus uh, due to the same action or continuation of the same action. Now let's step it up a bit. So from frame two to frame three, we don't have a common object. I mean, the object is common, it's an egg, but it is not looking exactly the same. It is cracking and dropping down. And now from here, it is scaling down. I mean, it is moving in the Z axis, but we have to make it look like it is the part of the same scene and add a seamless transition. So the first thing we can do over here is let's bring the playhead over here where the egg is, egg is dropping down somewhere around here or maybe here and let's bring the composition start exactly here. So with this it is still working well and also looking like it's the part of the same action since the object is common but we can take it a bit further like we can add some position movement and add a like we can add a bit of camera movement. So let's move the playhead somewhere around here. So let's open the position property and add a keyframe. And let's move the playhead somewhere around here and let's add a keyframe over here. Let's turn off the visibility of the frame 3 for now and I'm going to move the composition a bit up. So I'm just uh, panning down the camera uh, for this frame. Let's easy the keyframe, move the playhead over here from where I have, I'm just adding the cut. And this is where I'm going to implement another important trick of match cut. So select the keyframe, go to the motion graph editor and here in the speed graph, I'm going to pull the busy handles from both the side and add a peak or extreme peak exactly at the cut. This is a very important trick uh, while animating a match cut. So now for the frame three, I'm going to open the scale property. Since uh, it has a Z axis movement, so adding a position movement in Y axis won't work. So let's open the scale property add a keyframe over here and 
add a keyframe over here as well. Let's scale it up. And at this position, I'm just going to scale it down to about 95. Let's easy the keyframe. Now again, let's move the playhead exactly where I have added a cut. Let's move to the motion graph editor. Use the speed graph and add that extreme peak of the spike of the motion graph exactly where uh, we have added the cut. So I think we can slow down the overall camera movement a little bit. So let's select this keyframe and just pull it or expand it from both the ends. And also let's jump onto the motion graph editor and let's readjust the curve a little bit. Okay, so we can use ease copy to copy the motion graph from this two set of keyframes and paste it on this two set of keyframes. Well, yeah, this one is looking even better. So till now we have learned how match cut works. So we have applied match cut between two different scenes. Now we will learn how to animate a scene for match cuts. So inside the downloaded folder, inside the illustration, inside layer separated, we will import frame number five. Let's click and drag it and drop it here in the project panel and keep the settings as it is and press OK. Now we will bring the frame here in the main composition. Let's get inside the composition. Okay, now let's turn on the visibility of the frame number four. So we have to cut the frame after the character is picking up the egg with spatula. So maybe somewhere around here. So let's move the playhead by a few frame forward and let's see where the uh, character is coming to still. So here we will add the cut for the match cut. So let's bring the layer at this point and here we will add the cut. Let's get inside the composition and now we will animate this spatula which is putting the egg on the plate. So let's select the spatula and move the anchor point somewhere around here and let's select the egg layer and the spatula and convert these two layers into 3D layers. And now let's parent the egg layer with the spatula and open the position property, separate the dimension and we will only animate the Y axis. So let's add a keyframe on the Y position and also open the rotation property and we will add a keyframe on the X rotation. Press U to open the properties with keyframes. Now let's jump on to around next 20 frames and add keyframes. Okay, also let's add a keyframe on the Z position property as well. So open the position property, add a keyframe on Z and a keyframe at the start as well. So here we will add a rotation of around minus 20 degree. And also let's move it a little bit in the Z axis towards the camera. And then let's move the playhead at the start. And then we will move the spatula a little bit in the Z axis towards the camera. And maybe we can rotate it a bit in the opposite direction of around 4 degree. And let's bring it down in the Y axis. Like this. Let's easy is the keyframes. Jump onto the motion graph editor. Then change it to a speed graph. And then we will decrease the ease at the start. And increase the ease at the end. And after the spatula puts the egg on the plate, I'm just going to split the egg layer from this frame. So Ctrl plus Shift plus D is the shortcut key. And here in the parents and links, I'm just going to select none. And then open the rotation property and add a keyframe on X rotation. And now let's jump on to next around 30 frame. And now we will pull back the spatula outside the screen. So let's animate it in Y axis like this that is it and for the egg we can again rotate it back in 20 degrees so that it is completely flat now and we can is is the keyframes so it should be completely flat by now so let's move the keyframe and place it over here and let's check it out okay i think we can move the spatula a little bit uh, far away from the camera when it is going down. So we can just move it in the positive direction of Z axis. Now let's check it out. Yeah, this one is looking better. So now let's check it out from the main composition.
Okay, I think uh, there is a few frame pause uh, for this second frame. So what we can do is we can just move the frame few frames forward and just crop it from the start from where we can see the egg a little bit. And let's check it out now. Okay, let's move the frame by a few frames so that we can properly see the action of picking the egg. Yeah, this one is looking a lot better. I think you can, you have realized it already that for match cuts, timing is the most and the only important thing. And for that, you need to properly adjust the motion graph and wherever it is possible, you have to add that peak of the motion curve, curve where you are adding that match cut. That is all that is you have to keep in mind while you are applying match cut to transition between two scenes. It's not just about uh, animation, but also if you are doing uh, editing or f in filmmaking, still these concepts hold true. And from frame three to frame four to make the transition seamless, I have also added a fake 3D movement uh, for the frying pan. Uh, you can see the frying pan is the common element between these two scenes. So, and in the next frame, the character is uh, moving the frying pan over the oven, which is again that extra touch I needed to flawlessly transition between these two scenes. And also match cut is not just about adding cuts. You, you Sometimes you have to apply effects like line effects, burst effects, or even glitch effect. Of course, you have to uh, make the momentum continuous between the scenes. But at the same time, uh, applying few effects may uh, actually hide that frame where you have added that cut. And it would feel like it is part of the same scene. So these are some examples of that. All right, so that's all about match cuts and also the end of this course. And I'm also planning to make a separate course on how I have created this corporate explainer video. So do let me know in the comment section if I should make a detailed course on this and if you have any other suggestions or uh, suggestion for a future tutorial or future courses, again you can let me know in the comment section. So that's the end of this video and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.